Hey, welcome to Drive By Rev, where today we have a lens comparison between the EFM 22mm and the 32mm. Now, if you've been following along on the channel, you know I think highly of both of these lenses. And if you have the EFM mount system, I basically think you should have both of them in your pack. However, it's a much requested lens comparison and I'm pretty interested myself. So here we go, we're gonna dive right in, taking a look at the differences between the lenses themselves as well as how well they work in the field, their pros and cons, and the differences in usability for you in real world use. Here we go. A large focus of the EFM line of lenses from Canon is to maintain a compact and lightweight design. And these two lenses really do that in spades. Of course, the 22 millimeter being the pancake lens is the most compact and lightweight out of the bunch. And as you can see, it's quite small and put together with the Canon M50, it's extremely transportable, easy to hold in the hand, extremely lightweight. This only comes in weighing 100 grams and it has the exact same diameter as the 32 millimeter at about 61 millimeters. However, it's only 23.7 millimeters in length. Now the 32 millimeter, of course, is a little bit larger, takes a little bit more weight coming in at 230 grams. However, it easily justifies this considering its image quality and its performance as a faster lens coming in at f1.4 when it's wide open. Both have metal connection plates on the mount side. Both fit snugly on the Canon M50, and they both utilize the STM stepping motor from Canon for smooth, silent autofocusing when utilizing for videos. Now, I find both these lenses quite compact and lightweight. I don't really notice the difference in weight or size, except for the fact that utilizing this focus ring on the 32 millimeter is a lot easier, as sometimes it's a little hard to find if you're just reaching for it on the 22 because it's so flat and small. There is quite the difference, though, when it comes to running gun photography. Check this out. Alright, so I took these lenses and the M50 to a drink and click event in Austin, Texas. It's kind of a fast run and gun fun event that gets a bunch of models together with photographers and we kind of just have fun hanging out. And it ended up being a pretty good example of some of the strengths and weaknesses between these two lenses. Uh, for example, the focal length is going to make a difference in where you have to stand to get any kind of subject isolation. And this is a good example of that. This is just kind of some test shots as the sun was starting to set. And as you can see, the 32 millimeter just easily allows you to, you know, in the same position as this, I was about 10, 12 feet away. It allows you to really get in there and get a nice composition outlined at least. Whereas the 22, you'd have to probably half the distance in order to get something even close to similar to this. And so when it comes to portrait photography, the 32 millimeter just really is the clear winner. And another example of this is here, where I was actually trying to get into some image quality shots which proved to be impossible with how fast this event moves. Uh, I kind of set up the shot and just started to see, you know, uh, what did it look like when I did some manual focusing and zoomed in to see where I got and um, 20 other photographers come out of nowhere and start taking shots along behind me. So as you can see, it's the same issue here. Um, exact same settings on both of the shots besides a little bit difference in the shutter speed for exposure. And you got the same issue where just way too much background if you're trying to do any type of subject isolation, which is appropriate for this style of shot. That ended up making the 32 millimeter the only practical lens between these two to use at this event, especially when the sunset uh, handheld, the F2 wasn't fast enough on the 22 millimeter to reduce the amount of blurring that I was getting from longer and longer shutter speeds. And so the tripod would have been necessary, which again, wasn't that practical at this event. So something to keep in mind between uh, the differences on these two lenses. Now, as far as image quality is concerned, let's pull up this phenomenal model. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so here we have a tripoded shot, manually focused, with a bunch of subjects put together to compare really well. And I also did this in where I have them taking the shot from the exact same tripoded position. And then we're also gonna have it replicated with me moving into almost the same composition. So that way we can kind of compare apples to apples and apples to oranges. So 
Let's start off with the same tripod of position, exact same settings. So here we go, ISO 100, F2, 1 1 400th of a second. And the 22 millimeter, of course, has that larger field of view, so it's kind of a little more zoomed out to the viewer. Um, now we're focused right with the thinnest depth of field for the 22 millimeter, right at the box which matches in line with my face, which is also lined up with the glasses and the Red Bull. Okay, so it's gonna be nice to see uh, and compare here as far as sharpness. And, uh, you know, letters, eh, yeah, a bit sharper on the 32 millimeter there. A bit sharper on the face. This is interesting, much more extreme bokeh. I mean, look at that, that's a, and this is something I have noticed, I just haven't really put them side by side like this yet. So that's, that's actually quite different. <laughs> and of course this makes sense because of the subjects farther away, you know, um, in terms of the field of view and how far that, you know, you gotta move the focus on the 22. So we'll see if that's still that much of a difference when we move the tripod. And then let's go to the, the glasses here. So this is interesting too, because with a 32 millimeter operating at the same f-stop, you're seeing kind of a more stark contrast in the depth of field. Like I can tell exactly where it starts going out of focus, right about there. Whereas this is just a little bit more subtle, like about here somewhere, and then here. Um, but once again, the glasses just aren't as sharp. Um, so less sharpness overall coming from the 22 millimeter, and that's expected. And I just didn't, it's, yeah, it's just not, imp not impressive. This is really nice. Look how crisp that is on the 32. Okay, so let's go up. We're gonna stop up one to 2.8. Okay, boop. So 2.8, and we're gonna see, yeah, an improvement in sharpness on the 22, pretty stark there. 32 looks even better. It's nice, we're gonna see a change Ah, not that much loss in the creamy background on the 32. The, <laughs> the uh, 22 millimeter, however, is starting to look a little bit more like a, a flip up camera, like a, just a running gun. Kind of reminds me of those Kodak cameras. You just kind of zip, zip, zip and take a snapshot. Okay, uh, depth of field is getting really large on the 22 at this range, whereas you're still seeing it be pretty thin on the 32 millimeter. Of course, that's that nice, I really like that nice subject isolation. You still get a lot of that. Let's go look at the Red Bull can here. Did I forget that on the first one? Yeah, you know, and what's interesting about this is, you know, people talk about bokeh or creamy backgrounds in the out of focus areas. And there really is a big difference between a beautiful version of that and something that's a bit kind of jagged and ugly. And I would say this is a really good example of that. I wish I got this part of the tree on this shot, but even if we cut that out, if you're only looking here, and this is interesting too, because the color seems a bit warmer. And yeah, a bit warmer overall, even in the even in the reds here. Just yeah, it's a little bit more blanched out and whiter on the 22 millimeter, which is interesting because this is the same exact white balance setting coming from the M50. And of course, Canon's really good at capturing uh, whites balancing that out correctly, but um, just a bit warmer on the 32 millimeter, which was also true, I think. No, my other comparison of the speed booster, the speed booster was even warmer than the 32, so <laughs> that's interesting. Okay, um, let's jump up one more stop. Let's see, 32, F4. Okay, so now we're starting to get a much larger depth of field. Um, easy to get a lot of this bridge in focus, so almost the entire bridge is in focus on the 22 millimeter. Still have a pretty good blur out there in the back of the bridge on the 32. Crisp and clear on the 32, crisp and clear on the 22 on the box. The glasses are now pretty decently in focus on the 22 as well. Extremely large depth of field here. Still looking wonderful on the 32, even better actually. And then the Red Bull can. Now, this is interesting. You can see a bit of a distortion on the 32, um, and I'll be curious to see how that compares when we stick the can at the same spot on the 22, but a little bit less there on that, but that's to be expected at these faster speeds. Uh, Boca is still killing it on the 32, still doing all right. Still looks pretty pretty. Starting to get a little jagged in there. You can kind of tell me what you think of this shot. Is it an interesting photo or not? <laughs> Okay, 22, let's bump it up by uh, 5.6. All 
All right, so the entire bridge looks really crisp here on the 22 millimeter. And it pretty much is. And the background looks pretty clear, right? Even the road back, even the trees, pretty in focus. Um, see on the 32, still slightly out of focus there. Still pretty blurry back there. Yeah, looking good here. Distortion backed off a little bit on the 32 millimeter. Not really noticeable on the 22. And the glasses looking good. Yeah. There you go. Okay, and we're going to compare this side by side on similar composition. Ooh, I can already see it. <laughs> Did the, someone bend that can? Okay, so same thing, a little bit different on the setting as far as exposure, but everything else is the same. And the only difference here is I moved in the tripod for the 22 to get a similar composition. Okay, so look at this. Wow. So the 22 millimeter has more distortion, clearly. You can see that. And now this is interesting. So since we zoomed in, ooh, just a little bit, yeah, a little soft there. A little soft. And just so you don't complain, it doesn't get any less soft with the change in depth of field, right? It's right there. Okay, let's go look at the glasses. Soft there. Just, yeah, I mean, like, depth of field should be right. See that in the wood there? It's kind of like right through here. So that should be in, in focus, but it is up in the corner. Of course, that's going to have these faster speeds and the 22 wide open is going to have its most difficult time um, you know reducing those lens aberrations now interestingly enough so you're going to see a bit of that bokeh kind of come in a little bit better here because I'm closer to the 22 millimeter in terms of its field of view and a um, bit better but the, the 32 still just beats it clearly beats it there with just a much better creamy background just, you know, removes a lot of that jagged look that you're just getting now. Uh, if you back out of the photo, nah, still pretty noticeable. Just looks better overall. And honestly, that warmer color really works. Okay, let's stop it up here. It's real quick. No need to kind of beat this one with the, beat it to death. There's no need to do that. Let's see here. Boop. Let's see if we kind of lose any of this distortion. Still looks pretty distorted there, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, cleared up on the letters there. That's looking a little better. Still a little soft. Glasses are looking better too. Okay, good. And then let's go up to F4. Even better. That's pretty much sharp and in focus there. That distortion is going to ride. It's just slightly less. It's just going to ride out completely, isn't it? Is it even going to disappear? <laughs> a lot more distortion out of the 22. I knew that. I just wasn't. I didn't. Wasn't aware it would be that much. Okay. Let's go. 5.6. Nice. Okay. So we've got really good. Thing. Actually, increased again on the 22. So. Got even crisper, so it still was a bit soft there. And then, yeah, at the, at the sacrifice of some of the background coming into a lot more focus. Distortion still very present on the 22. Not noticeable unless you have something like that can, right? The bridge is curved, so you don't really notice with that. And then the glasses are finally in focus. Still a lot crisper on the 32 millimeter, so good to know. Um, and of course, you know, you guys know my mentality in this. I like the 22 millimeter a lot for vlogging style video shots, which is something we're gonna look at here. And the 32 just is a better run and gun photography lens in general, but that's why I think both should be in your pack anyway. So this kind of shot here really would make more sense to use the 32 millimeter for, similar to the drink and click event. Okay, moving on to a lens flare comparison. This is the 22 millimeter. And as you can see, shooting into the bright sun, we're clearly getting some starburst artifact. You're also gonna see some of the colored circles and rings showing up.
But one thing you're going to notice is that there's really no hazing. We don't really lose any image quality here. And we also don't lose any of that color saturation, which is phenomenal. And you're going to see as we switch over to the 32, there really isn't a marked improvement here. In fact, the artifacts are a little bit more pronounced on the 32 millimeter. Although I find both the presentation and shooting into the sun like this, it's actually quite pleasing and will work well with the kind of videography compositions that people look for when they're shooting into something as bright as, say, the sun. All right, shooting into a bright background from a tripod position, this is a comparison with a 22 millimeter on the left, 32 millimeter on the right, shooting F2 at ISO 100. And as you can see when we zoom in here, the 22 millimeter has clear chromatic aberration, even in the center of the photo. Um, there's definitely some blurring on the 32 millimeter, but I don't really see much purple fringing, maybe a teeny bit. However, if we go up into the corner here, you're going to see it be extremely present and pronounced throughout the 30, 22 millimeter here up in the corners. It's just a stark contrast there. And that's going to be pretty much true anywhere on the borders of the photo. So yeah, you can see that here, just very fuzzy, lack of sharpness and purple hazing coming off those back twigs that are near that extremely bright backdrop. Now, if we stop up, we're going to go F 2.8 here. You're gonna see that basically disappear from the center of the photo. Not present, there's blurring, but that's normal, right? That's what we're looking for. Or I guess you could say that's desirable. <laughs> Chromatic aberration is actually normal too. It's just how much is gonna be in there. And here we go, uh, still present on the 22. Just not really noticeable, but you are gonna see the clarity, the sharpness. It's just much more prevalent on the 32 millimeter. And if we stop up again, basically no more purple on either of the photos here. Looking more and more in focus. However, the 32, of course, is ahead of the game on sharpness in general. And then also we're starting to see some colors come out here on the 32 as well. And if we go all the way up to 5.6, and in this photo we even got a little bit of flaring, um, you're gonna see that basically, yeah, it's pretty good on both these photos. The chromatic aberration's pretty much gone not really seeing any purple going on here. And this is interesting too, just in relation to the video we just saw, the lens flaring. Now, one thing to keep in mind is even in the photo and video mode, the artifact from lens flaring is just much more pronounced on the 32 millimeter, which I actually kind of liked in the video. You even saw maybe even slight hazing, you could argue in the video with the 32. But this just, you know, in general looks a lot more beautiful to the eye in my opinion, compared to the 22. But there you go, comparison when shooting into a bright backdrop and the 32 millimeter is a clear winner overall as far as keeping the chromatic aberration at bay. And this particular comparison I think is actually quite noticeable and something to take note of when you're deciding between these two lenses for uses or purchase. Okay, here we are with a 32 millimeter vlogging style shot out in a pool area. And the main thing here you're gonna find is vlogging style shots is kind of its weakness. It's acting like a 50 millimeter equivalent on a full frame, so it's quite zoomed in. This is my arm reaching out as far as I can get it. You're gonna find there's some limitations, but it's quite a bit of fun to use wide open at f1.4 when you have low light situations like this. Minimal lighting and a lot of cool slow-mo abilities where you gotta shoot at 120 frames per second. Check it out. Right, in contrast to the 32 millimeter, the 22 has a much nicer field of view when it comes to vlogging style shots. So check it out, same type of composition, same kind of fun, except now with the 22 millimeter. Here we go. Of fun, but definitely a reason to have some waterproofing 
apparatus around the M50. I'm gonna have to look into that. It doesn't really have any weatherproofing at all. So, be nice to have that, but you know, it's held up pretty well. And the nice thing about the 22 millimeter is it's a cost-efficient lens, pretty resilient, really small lens element on the front, but a lot more usable for vlogging style shots like this, right? And as you can see, F2 is plenty right now. Plenty to get a lot of action, even at 120 frames per second. Okay, last up, looking at low light conditions. And here we have the 22 millimeter shooting at F2 wide open and max ISO 12,800. And as you can see, even with some indirect 500 foot away lighting from these nice top-down lights in a parking lot, it's really not enough. And if you lower the ISO down at all, you're gonna see how much less light you're getting into the shot. So we just have to get it grainy like this if you're gonna shoot this level of low lighting with the 22 millimeter. Now, here's a field of view, right? Take a look at it. Here's the difference with the 32 millimeter, also shooting at f2 for good comparison back and forth. And the big thing to realize with that is if you're going to utilize one of these lenses for vlogging style material, video shots kind of like this, and you're planning on holding it in your hand and shooting your own face, those kind of vlog style shots are really only going to be doable with the 22 millimeters because here's how far I'd have to be away with the 22 millimeter for a vlog style shot, and here's how close <laughs> and personal it would look like with a 32 millimeter if I was using a handhold shot. So just not really usable for those selfie vlog style shots. You're going to need to have someone shooting a subject behind the camera if you're going to use that 32 millimeter. Now beyond that, the other piece to keep in mind is something I mentioned earlier and that's with photos. If you have it stationed on a tripod, delayed trigger, long exposure, they both shoot out pretty crystal clear shots as long as they're given those settings. But when you're going handheld, as soon as you start to go and creep up into the longer exposure, even something like 1 30th of a second, you start to see the blur and kind of the limitation of the M50 body itself where it doesn't really have any internal stabilization for photo mode. It does in video mode where you can do, you know, the digital stabilization, but that's it. So keep that in mind. The 22 millimeter does make a big difference with that extra stop you get out of the 32 in comparison. Speaking of which, let's jump over to the 32. Boom, 32. And here we're at F2, also shooting at 12,800. You can see the apples to apples difference with the 22 millimeter. Now, here's the improved lighting when we switch to 1.4. And there you go, there's a subtle difference between the two aperture settings there. And that's actually one thing to keep in mind when you're comparing these two lenses. What kind of lighting situations you're gonna be shooting in? What are you gonna be caught in? Could you benefit from that extra speed coming from the 32 millimeter? And really for me, that was one of the most valuable things that the 32 millimeter had to offer on the drink and click event, run and gun style shooting and videography. It just could capture more light in the low light situations. You even saw that a bit in the slow-mo shots at the pool because that 120 frames per second doesn't let in as much light. And as you saw, the 22 millimeter almost wasn't enough, right? It was kind of dim and dingy looking. And it's, it's just borderline usable when you get no direct lighting at all in those nighttime settings. Something to keep in mind when you're looking for maybe a little bit faster lens. But that being the case, when people ask me, should I get the 22 or should I get the 32? I find it to be an interesting question because as you probably already know, I think there's room for both in your pack. But if you have no use really for the 32 millimeter with what I've shown you today, if you're like, yeah, I don't really need any of those things, the image quality difference doesn't really bug me. Well, then you don't need to spend the 400 plus dollars on the 32 millimeter. You're going to be happy with something like the 22, which is quite cheap in comparison. But, you know, if you think you might use it a bit or quite a bit, it's totally worth the cost. I think it's one of the most valuable lenses in the EFM lineup, if not one of the best or the best bang for your buck lens out of the native lens lineup for the EFM mount system. All in all, I hope I answered all your major questions about comparing these two lenses head to head. If you want to check out the lenses or buy them for yourself, please check out the links down in the description below and in the comments. And of course, don't forget to leave your comments on the video. Let me know if you have any further questions or what you thought about both these two lenses performance out in the field. And as always, thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to like the video if you like the video and subscribe if you're not subscribed. And I'll see you next time on Drive by Reviews. Three o'clock in the morning. Like nobody's asleep. This is like Vegas. City never sleeps. Oh, by the way, I picked up the new M6 Mark II. So stay tuned for videos on that. Exciting comparison maybe with the M50.